Good morning everybody and welcome back. It's kind of a crisp morning here in Minnesota. It's 9 degrees right now, but at least the sun is out so it doesn't feel too bad. Now that we've had the house here for almost two months, had a chance to kind of figure a few things out. When you get a house that was bought out of an estate so you're not buying it directly from the person that lived here, and the house was vandalized and everything, you get very little history. And uh, we're going through the things that we want to do up here, as well as figuring things out, and I thought I would share some of that with you guys. One of the things we decided to do for right now, we moved the uh, game camera right up here. Melissa's not getting home until, you know, well after dark this time of year. So it was kind of a pain to walk out in the field and feed them. So we put the camera right here. because she's just been grabbing the corn coming out of the garage and feeding them right here. And I just put that camera there a couple days ago, but the deer do come around and uh, I did get a few pictures the last two nights. Eventually I'll put it back out there where it was before, but for right now, I mean now some of the nights are getting below zero. There's gonna be lots of nights that's gonna go to 20, 25, even 30 below zero. A lot easier to feed them just right at the house. This garage right here that you saw me put the garage door opener and the garage door in, that's kind of like her garage and we park her work vehicle in right there. And that garage up there, I was going to make into the workshop eventually, but then Melissa and I were talking this weekend and in a way that would be kind of stupid because right now I've got her truck is parked in that garage. This garage over here, uh, my truck would never fit in there, not in a seven foot garage door. So if I ever want to put my truck in a garage, that one's got a tall enough garage door. So it just seems like the smart thing to do that if this is already set up as a garage and we do have vehicles that need to go in here, lawnmowers, everything, it, the other garage would never be big enough. So like I said, we're just going to leave this one a garage now. Eventually, like I talked about before, this old trailer right here will get pulled out of here, crushed, whatever we do with it. It's an eyesore, but for right now, it's not bothering anything, so it can stay here for a while, but eventually it's going to be gone. And then this barn back here, which I mean, I showed in one of the first videos, but we really haven't looked at that close. It's 36 by 50, I believe. At one time when it was first built, this was definitely for cattle. I, all the there's stuff out back the old cages and everything and you can see the cement curb that's right there my dad was out here explaining how all that used to work his grandma used to have a barn kind of like this and he would always have to feed the cows so he was explaining all that but then after looking at stuff here that was in this room paperwork and everything and talking to the realtor this was uh, converted into a cabinet shop for a while And back here they have a power pole and the meter is off of it right now. But if I look at the electricity, if I go down here, you can see that plug in right there. That electric runs over here and went in here and it fed this when it was a cabinet shop. It has a hundred amp service out here. So I mean, you can look on here and it'll say stuff like Woodmaster and it's got uh, the spray room fan, so I mean definitely they did the cabinets and they also finished them here. This part right here that's been partitioned off from the rest of this room. It's hard to see in here, but this room here then was the, is that room, the one where they would do varnishing and staining and painting. So what I'm going to do is, coming across with that wall, I'm going to continue that wall all the way across 
over to that side and that will give a shop size in here of about 22 by 36. Behind that then all of that can stay as just like a barn. You can use, we can use it for animals or storage or whatever we want. That big table right there I'm going to cut that right side off of it so it's a little bit more square. Drag that up here into the workshop. I'll put workbench all along that wall over there and where the cement curb is I'm going to come up and start another workbench that starts like on the left side and then hangs over to the right. So you'll have workbench here and workbench over on that side also. This building has steel beams that run front to back and all the way across this front with you know a few places there'll be a post in holding it. So I want to put a bigger door so a person can get in here easier with bigger, you know, bigger material, bigger lumber. When you look out here, you can see that cement curb that's in there. It actually goes out 12 feet. It's 16 feet wide. And this used to have like a little, like an entry building outside of this door right here that goes into the main building. You can see right there where it was attached to the building and then it would have just had a slow slope coming out to the front. I'm actually going to build that again. I think that'll be nice to have that outside and then just put a door that goes in here right in this corner and then that door can just get removed. It, it all has to be cleaned up and it can be nice. It's just, you know, people just let it go. That tree growing right there, cut all that down, get all this cleaned up. I think in that original paint room, I'm going to cut a door in on this side, partition part of that off, and that can be the place where a person goes in there and does the staining and the varnishing and the painting. Because sometimes a big deal is all the dust and everything that gets around it, and we can keep that area fairly dust free. But anyway, in the end, this can be a really nice workshop. It just needs a little TLC. And that's exactly my line of work. This whole eyesore area right here, we finally got this all figured out. And it's kind of weird because Melissa and I were talking about putting one of those wood outdoor wood boiler systems in, not only to heat the house, but from here, if we put one right about here, it's only about a 170 foot run over to the workshop. So I can heat that the same way. I would also put another, the, another wood stove in there. But we'd have that. And then of course it would also feed the house. We originally thought that this, would, this little eyesore of a building or whatever you want to call it was something that they threw up just for, you know, winter for their animals to go into. But there was a few things that we just couldn't figure out. Like this little bin here is full of old phone books. And this bin right here, which really baffled me, has coal in it. And right here next to all this, there's a cement slab here. There was electricity run here. And I originally thought, well, they must have had like an animal water or something, and they had something to heat the water here to keep it, you know, from freezing in the wintertime. And they had these two pipes, and they ran into the basement. Anyway, Melissa and I were sitting on the couch discussing putting in one of these outdoor wood boilers, and that's when it hit me. It's like, that's what was here in the past. So then, of course, um, after, you know, the next day or so, she was looking on past pictures that you can look online to see the house, and you can actually see the wood boiler sitting there. That shed was made just to, for wood. They also burned phone books, and they also burned coal. Those two plastic PEX-like pipes that come out of the ground there, like I said, they went into the basement over in that corner and they actually come in right here originally they ran all the way across the basement and just bear with me this lens is gonna fog up a little bit but it's you know I just went from nine or ten degrees into the house and they came over and they went all the way over to the furnace 
and you can't see this very good, but right here, furnace is down below, and right there, I had to repair that. That metal that you see there was missing. It was like there was a eight inch or nine inch spot where the, the plenum didn't hook up to the furnace. And right there is where they had the heat exchanger. I just couldn't put two and two together. I thought they were trying to do some makeshift thing to circulate water and heat the water so the animals could you know, have non-frozen water. And here it was a heat exchanger for the outdoor wood boiler. And you can actually see right here, because I cut that pipe off right there, they also had it run in for hot water for the house. Normally with these wood boilers, you can run at least three zones off. So one for the house, one for the workshop. I can run another one up if I want to dig it in, up to the, like, her garage, I call it. Anyway, I think that would be a real decent deal. I know some people up here that, that are in the tree, whatever, where they cut trees down, that kind of a business. So maybe I can get wood dropped off here. We'll have to wait and see. One thing we're really looking forward to in the spring is getting this area all cleaned up. That back building is a chicken coop, putting a new fence on the, the front of it, a cage area, getting rid of those or moving those white chicken things that they have, and just getting all the brush cleared out of here. That piece of brush right there in the middle of the screen, cutting that all out and getting it mowed behind there, just kind of cleaning it up and making it look nice. I did put a handrail going up the stairs and then on, on the, each stair tread, even though I'm going to redo those stairs, I put an anti-slip thing on there. Melissa wouldn't even go upstairs. They were, they're so steep without a handrail. Um, it's just kind of scary going up and down. So I did get that done. We got the Christmas tree set up and a whole bunch of the decorations put in there because in a couple weeks here we're going to be having a Christmas party up here. So I'm kind of glad all that's done. We have picked up a couple more antique pieces. I haven't uh, done a video on those. One of them we just picked up this weekend. It's another buffet. And that there, it needs a little bit of work, so I'm going to bring those, the drawers and the doors, with me uh, back down to the workshop. And uh, I'm going to get those glued up and fixed up. And once I get that done, I'll do a video on all those. Well, thanks a lot for watching, everybody. You get kind of an update on what our thoughts are right now. I've actually got to jump in the truck and head out. My fingers are absolutely freezing. <laughs> it's cold out here. I will see you guys on the next video.